Hey boys, it's Harm9. Today we're going to be going over 10 things that every solo player needs to own in Grand Theft Auto Online in 2022 to be successful. Now there's a lot of lists like this going over 10 things that you need to own. However, on this list, I try to think of some things that are a little bit out of the box, some things that you might not initially think of when you are thinking of things that you will need to buy. Obviously, there's a lot of people who are very well established in GTA. This is more for solo players that are a little bit more new to Grand Theft Auto Online. Anyways, we're gonna go ahead and get started with number 10. At number 10, guys, we have weapons. Now, weapons are something that I feel like a lot of players kind of overlook, especially when they're starting out in GTA Online. And if you're playing by yourself, you don't have anybody to tell you what you need to buy, it's gonna be a little bit more challenging to figure that out. Basically, there's only a few weapon categories that you're really going to need in online that are actually important. The first is a shotgun and my recommendation is the assault shotgun. You unlock this thing in your mid 30s. I believe it's level 37 when you get this and you can equip it with a 32 round drum mag on the bottom as well as a suppressor and various other attachments. You can clear out rooms like it's nothing. I love the assault shotgun. I think that it truly is one of the best weapons in the entire game. My next recommendation is in the sniper slot and it is of course the marksman rifle. This is the marksman rifle mark 2 so you guys won't be able to get this right away. At level 1 you can get the marksman rifle and it's going to be a pretty good sniper rifle. I'd recommend getting the marksman rifle instead of getting the regular sniper. Now the regular sniper it's it's okay, it does higher damage than the marksman rifle, but it is bolt action, so you can't spam fire it. It does take quite a while for you to actually be able to follow up with another shot, and this thing will not one-shot any players. The next recommendation that I have for the assault rifle category is the special carbine mark one. Now this is the special carbine mark two, but the special carbine mark one has a 100 round drum mag that's equipable on it. It does really heavy damage as well for being an assault rifle that you can unlock from level one. So this is my recommendation for your one assault rifle that you are going to need. And finally, for your pistol, I would recommend getting an AP pistol. The AP pistol, you unlock in your mid-level 30s, I do believe it is, and it has a 36 round mag if you put the extended mag on it. It also does way better damage than the micro SMG, so if you guys can avoid buying the micro SMG, just get the AP pistol instead. Uh, this thing does much higher damage, it's more accurate, and I feel like it's just generally a better weapon than the micro SMG. So I'd recommend an AP pistol over that thing. I'd say just avoid the micro SMG altogether. And of course, in your heavy weapon slot, the only thing that you can unlock when you are a lower level is the homing launcher. Now, the homing launcher, I do recommend a lot. It is okay for taking out aircraft. Um, it's not the best thing ever, but it is okay at taking out ground vehicles as well. It's a decent weapon for defending yourself. However, if you are trying to use it against just players that are on the ground, it's going to lock onto random things in the distance, which is going to be kind of a pain. So the only other recommendation that I can really give you when you're a lower level is maybe picking up a grenade launcher or the compact grenade launcher. Those are both really good for taking out players and NPCs alike. Uh, the homing launcher, not so much for that sort of stuff. Then of course, once you get higher leveled, you're going to want to pick up a heavy sniper mark too. Beyond that, obviously, when you get high enough leveled, you're going to want to pick up the RPG. The RPG is obviously, you know, quite good. Um, it does, it does shred pretty hard, but that's pretty much it. You're just going to want to have some good weapons in GTA. You're going to need to be able to defend yourself, but for the most part, I wouldn't spend too much money on weapons. As you guys can see, I have nine assault rifles in my loadout right now. And I only ever use like three of them. So, you know, if you can just avoid buying some of these just to save yourself some money, it's going to help you to use that money to be able to buy businesses and things that can make you more money in GTA Online. Just basically buy the bare necessities. Don't go crazy in ammunition. Don't just be buying everything as much as you can. Just buy a few solid weapons and just stick with those. That's pretty much it for number 10. Let's move on to number nine. At number nine, we have a fast car. Now you're going to need a fast car in GTA Online. This is a pretty obvious one, I think. But you're going to need one of these for time trials mostly. That's the reason that I'm recommending you guys to get something a little bit quicker to drive because time trials can make you an absolute ton of money. Now, obviously, if you guys are on the expanded and enhanced edition of Grand Theft Auto Online, not only do you get access to the regular time trial, but you also get access to the HSW time trial. Now, you're going to need an HSW vehicle if you're on the expanded and enhanced edition so you can participate in that HSW time trial. You can't do it with a regular car. For an HSW vehicle that I recommend, and honestly, the HSW Hakuchu Drag is absolutely crazy. That thing is super, super fast. The Hakuchu Drag HSW is, well, it's quite literally the fastest.
across this vehicle in Grand Theft Auto Online around a circuit. It, uh, it actually beats the open wheel cars around a circuit, which is pretty crazy. It's super, super fast. That's a great top speed. So if you guys are on the expanded and enhanced edition, definitely pick up an HSW vehicle. It doesn't have to be the Hakuchi Drag. That's just one that came to mind right away because I actually have it on my expanded and enhanced edition character. If you're on the regular edition of Grand Theft Auto on PC or Xbox One or PlayStation 4 though, I'd recommend something like the Anis S80RR that you guys can see I'm driving right here. It's super, super fast. It's the top five fastest supercar in the game on last gen. And the reason I'm recommending the S80 over something like the Krieger and the Emirates is because this thing is more like a race car. So you can actually go around corners super, super fast in this thing, and it's gonna hunker down to the road really, really nicely. Obviously, I just completely bend it on that corner. But for the most part, this thing gets really good down for us, and you'll be able to go around corners with this a lot easier than you can with something like the Krieger or the Emirates a lot of the time. The Krieger is an honorable mention here though because it is all-wheel drive so if you did have to do some off-road driving the Krieger is going to be a little bit better than the S80RR that's for sure or something like the Emirates but basically you're just going to need something really fast to do these time trials. Obviously time trials pay $102,000 and the HSW time trial pays $252,000 upon completion so you can do them obviously every single week in Grand Theft Auto Online so that's a lot of money that you can have uh, for you know really not that much effort. All you're going to need is a fast car and as long as you do the time trial every week the fast car is going to pay for itself. So that's pretty much it for number nine. Get yourself something fast so that you can do these time trials. Next up at number eight some armored vehicles are going to be something that you guys are going to need in Grand Theft Auto Online, especially if you plan to play in free mode, but even if you don't, they are still going to be quite useful for just against NPCs. Some ones that I would recommend picking up are the HVY Insurgent Pickup Custom. That is a great vehicle. The Kanjali, obviously, it's a tank. It's going to be pretty great as well. The Night Shark is a bargain vehicle. This thing is super fast and it has front-mounted machine guns, and it has just as good armor as the Insurgent. So this is definitely one that I recommend probably more so than any of the other ones I've previously mentioned. It goes for $1.25 million. So it is a little bit cheaper and it does have really good performance. Now this is really good against players, but against NPCs, the Night Shark is not really gonna cut it because it does have quite large windows which the NPCs can shoot through. So for against NPCs, I'd recommend picking up something like an Armored Karuma or an Imponte Duke of Death. If you need something a little bit more heavily armored, you're gonna want something like a Night Shark or the Insurgent Pickup Custom, like I said. Definitely Definitely don't use your armored Karuma against players because it does die in one explosive, so it's not going to provide you with any protection against actual players, however it is very good against NPCs. So that's pretty much it for armored vehicles at number 8, let's move on to number 7. Next up at number 7 we have the CEO office and some large CEO crate warehouses. Now the CEO office can be had for as little as 1 million dollars if you get the cheapest one and it can be had for as expensive as 4.1 million dollars if you get the most expensive one. Now in addition to the CEO office you're also going to need some CEO crate warehouses. As you guys can see I have a small one here and I have a medium one down here but on my expanded and enhanced edition character I have five large warehouses. Now large warehouses actually increase the value of the crates that are within them once they get full. Crates will be worth around $20,000 in a large crate warehouse whereas in a small crate warehouse they're only going to be worth about $15,000 and in a medium crate warehouse they're going to be worth about $17,500 each. So large warehouses are the best, however they are also the most expensive. Now what I've done on my expanded and enhanced edition character is bought these five warehouses right here that are pretty close together so that I can go and resupply them very, very quickly. Now obviously from the CEO office you can actually launch CEO cargo steel missions where you can buy them and then you go pick them up and deliver them to your warehouse. However, with the addition of the Criminal Enterprises DLC into Grand Theft Auto Online, they have added a new way to source CEO cargo. Now found within each of your CEO cargo warehouses, you will have a new employee. And with this new employee, you can find them within each of your CEO crate warehouses and you can speak to them. And then you can pay them $7,500 to source CEO cargo. Now, the interesting thing is they can source up to three crates and one special item. Now, most of the time they're gonna source one crate, but on average, apparently they source around 1.7 crates per 48 minutes. So every 48 minutes of real time or every in-game GTA day, you're gonna get some random crates into your warehouse. Now you can fill up your warehouses very quick with this. You're gonna be able to sell your warehouses for an absolute ton of money. I've been doing it on my expanded and enhanced edition character, and I have made a absolute ton of money. I think somewhere around $8 million this week, which is pretty insane money. So that's it for number seven. Get yourself a CEO 
office and then get yourself some large CEO crate warehouses, fill them up and then when bonus money comes onto those businesses, definitely do some sale missions and make yourself lots of money. The sale missions are really, really easy a lot of the time, so you can do it as a solo player even if your warehouse is completely full. So don't be afraid, fill that thing up and sell it when it's double or 50% more money. That's it for number seven, let's move on to number six. Next up in number six, we have the Toreador or the Stromberg. Now this is budget dependent. If you guys have more money, you're gonna wanna pick up the Toreador over the Stromberg every single time. However, if you got a little less money, the Stromberg still does provide a uh, sort of Toreador experience, just a little bit worse. Now the Toreador goes for $3.6 million and the Stromberg goes for somewhere around $2.6 million. So it is a lot cheaper than this thing. However, it is a lot less of a good vehicle. So basically the reason that I'm telling you guys to pick up these is for Mark II Oppressor users. Now, if you guys are playing in public sessions, you're gonna run into Mark II Griefers. No matter what you do, you always run into these guys. They will always come after you no matter what you're doing. If you're doing some sort of business dealing, if you're just driving around by yourself, minding your business, they're still gonna come for you they're still going to lock onto you and they're still going to shoot you and try to kill you. Now the Toreador does have some armor to it and it also is equipped with the second most aggressive missiles in Grand Theft Auto Online. So this means that if Mark II Oppressor users come after you, you should be able to get a lock onto them just as fast as they get a lock onto you. And Oppressor users are a one shot, but the Toreador is a six shot for the Oppressor. So as long as you get your missile off first, there's a very decent chance that you're going to kill them and actually survive. Now the Stromberg operates very similarly, except the Stromberg can only take four missiles, I believe it is, and it does have slightly better missiles but the missiles on the Stromberg are limited and the other thing about the Stromberg is it does have a special minimap icon so everybody's gonna know that you're driving a Stromberg however the Toreador does not have that both of these cars are also submersible you can take them underwater basically you know effectively turning the cars into submarines that can also drive on land however something that the Stromberg does not have is of course the rocket boost now the rocket boost is equipped on the Toreador by default. The Toreador is a very, very good vehicle to have in Grand Theft Auto Online. It's definitely one that I recommend for solo players. You're not going to need a gunner or anything to operate this vehicle. You're just going to need yourself, which is very, very nice, obviously. That's it for number six. Let's move on to number five. Next up at number five, we have an Imani Tech vehicle. Now, an Imani Tech vehicle is something you're going to want in Grand Theft Auto Online. It's not just something that you should have. Now, the best Imani Tech vehicle currently, in my opinion, is the Obey Omni EGT, which you guys can see right here now this thing is electric and it was added with the criminal enterprises dlc because it is electric it does have extremely good acceleration the top speed is of course pretty weak because it's electric as well so you can upgrade this thing within your agency to have imani tech now with imani tech as i'm sure many of you are aware you can equip your vehicle with a missile lock on jammer or of course a remote control device this thing can take 12 homing missiles or 12 rpgs once you equip the armor on it and also in addition to this you can equip it with the missile lock on jammer meaning that this thing can't get locked onto and it can take 12 shots from an rpg or a homing missile if they can somehow manage to free fire and hit you so this thing is super super well armored largely because you cannot lock onto it so that's a super super useful feature now this thing goes for about 1.8 million dollars these vehicles are going to serve you super super well and honestly you will not regret buying them at all that's it for number five, it's time to move on to number four. Next up at number four, guys, we of course have the Kasatka. Now this is something that a lot of people are gonna be a little bit pressed about that I didn't rank it higher on this list, but I put it at number four because Kayo Perico has been nerfed. Now that's gonna be the main reason that you're gonna to wanna to own a Kasatka. Obviously with the Kasatka, you get access to the Kayo Perico heist. Now the Kasatka is good for something beyond the Kayo Perico heist though. Now within your Kasatka, you can store a Sparrow, which is one useful feature you can take off from the submarine with this helicopter and get inland very very quickly you can also have this submarine that you can buy with the kasatka to store in here and then on top of that you can also store a vehicle that's submersible like the toreador for example this is where i keep mine and it makes it so that you can exit the ship really really fast and then get to shore using the toreador so obviously these are super useful to have in your kasatka of course you can launch the kayo perico heist from your kasatka as well now obviously you can also pilot the submarine and you can launch cruise missiles from it, but I think that one of the most useful and overlooked features about the Kasatka is its ability to fast travel. Now as you guys can see, you can fast travel from Vespucci Beach to any of these locations. So say that I want to go to Mount Gorgon.
Florida or Polito Bay actually. We can go to Polito Bay for $2,000 and I will select this and then next thing you know we're actually going to be over there. Now this does not take very long at all, usually about 30 seconds until the submarine is fully docked where it needs to be and you can actually get out of it. So this is super super useful for getting around the map if you need to get somewhere in a hurry. The Kasatka is a really good way of doing it. Now you can do this a lot faster than flying a helicopter or a jet and if you don't have access to a helicopter or a jet if you can manage to get to your Kasatka and then get out of it really really quick it's going to save you an absolute ton of time. As you guys can see here we are in Polito Bay so that's pretty much it for the Kasatka and number four it's time to move on to number three. Now the next thing that I'm going to recommend you guys to pick up is a good attack helicopter. Now the one that I'm recommending the most is an FH-100 however in order to own this thing you are going to need a hangar. So for those of you who don't have a hangar the other helicopter that I recommend picking up first of all before you get this is the buzzard. Now the buzzard goes for 1.75 million dollars and it is a pretty solid helicopter. You can spawn it in right beside you when you're registered as a CEO so it's really really useful. It spawns in super quick and of course it has homing missiles, it has machine guns and it can seat four players. Now using the buzzard or using something like the FH-100 you can make an absolute ton of money doing missions like headhunter for example or agency security contracts. I bought the FH-100 about two weeks ago on my expanded and enhanced edition character and using the FH-100 I've not only paid for it but I also had to buy a hangar so it cost me around 3.6 million dollars to actually get my FH-100 and I've easily made five million dollars with it in just two weeks by doing agency security contracts when they were on double money and headhunters over and over again. It's a super super useful helicopter and also the homing missiles on this thing are crazy good. They have insanely good tracking. Now the FH-100 isn't the only attack helicopter that I recommend. Of course like I said the buzzard. The FH-100 is also really really good but another really good one to pick up that is going to need you to own a hangar is of course the Akula. The Akula has stealth mode so you can completely disappear from the radar using that helicopter and of course it can also seat four players which is really nice. You can also use your attack helicopter for getting from one CEO cargo warehouse to the next really really quickly. That's what I've been doing on my expanded and enhanced edition character and it's been making me an absolute ton of money because I can just get to each of my warehouses, quickly source some CEO cargo passively and then get on to fighting my next target, basically running headhunter and doing security contracts in between. So attack helicopters are super useful to have in GTA Online for a lot of different reasons. Definitely pick one of these things up if you guys have some spare money laying around. And if you don't have any spare money to buy one right now, definitely make it your next purchase. Save up and get one of these things because they're going to help you an absolute ton. Now obviously an important part of being a solo player in Grand Theft Auto Online is having the ability to make money. So number two, we're going to be talking about the agency. Now the agency is a great business in Grand Theft Auto Online and it was added with the contract DLC. Now once you purchase this business, you get access to not only the contract, which is a heist that you can actually run solo, and it takes about an hour and a half and will pay you $1 million upon completion. In addition to this, you also get access to security contracts and payphone hits. Now, the more security contracts that you complete, the higher your daily safe passive income is. So in your wall safe here within your agency, you get income deposited into it every 48 minutes or every in-game day in Grand Theft Auto Online, which you can then go and collect. Now, depending on how many security contracts you've completed, your amount of money that's deposited into the safe every day will change. So if you've completed 11 security contracts, you will get $1,000 deposited every 48 minutes of real time into your safe. If you've completed 101 security contracts, you will get $10,000 deposited into your safe every single in-game day or 48 minutes and it maxes out at 201 contracts completed which will give you $20,000 every in-game day or every 48 minutes. So this is a really really good way to earn some passive income. You don't have to check this every day. Your safe caps at $250,000. So you just show up every few days and collect your money. Now of course in addition to this like I mentioned we have payphone hits. Payphone hits will pay you 85 grand as long as you complete the payphone hit within the 15 minute time frame and you do everything that they ask. So the agency is a really good way to make some money and of course you can do all of this in an invite only session. This is how I've been making a lot of money on my expanded and enhanced edition character and when security contracts go on double money let me tell you they are an absolutely fantastic way to earn some money in Grand Theft Auto Online. 
So the agency is a super good business for solo players and is definitely one that I recommend picking up for sure. It's time to get on to the number one thing that solo players need to own in Grand Theft Auto Online in order to be successful. You guys probably know where I'm going with this. It is another business and it is another way to earn a lot of money. Of course, the business in question is the nightclub. Now, the nightclub is the best solo business in all of Grand Theft Auto Online. And not only is it the best solo business, it's just the best business. The nightclub is second to none. If you keep your nightclub popularity maxed out, your safe will make you $50,000 every in-game day or every 48 minutes of real time. You can then go to your safe and collect this money and it takes virtually no effort. And in order to keep your popularity high, your nightclub now spawns in little tiny side missions where you will have to drive a VIP home or kick a troublemaker out of your nightclub. Now these things are not very hard to do at all. And if you don't have the ability to kick somebody out or drive a VIP home to max your popularity, you can go into your computer and change your resident DJ. Now, the first time you do this, it's going to cost you $100,000. However, every time after that, it's only going to cost you 10 grand. And for 10 grand, you will get half a bar of popularity. So we're going to rebook this DJ. And as you guys can see, it's going to play a little cutscene. Now, in order to actually skip this cutscene, what you can do is switch your DJ from the nightclub basement. That is going to save you going through this cutscene and spawning at the front of your nightclub and having to run all the way back to your office. So that's a good way to save some time. And of course, this is not the only way to earn money with the nightclub. Now, this is probably the best way to earn money with the nightclub. It's certainly the fastest. Every 48 minutes making 50 grand is no joke. That is super, super fast. But of course, there's also the nightclub basement. Now, within your nightclub basement, you can equip it with five basement layers which will allow it to accrue more goods. Now your nightclub basement relies on your ownership of several other different businesses in Grand Theft Auto Online like CEO Cargo, The Bunker, The Coke Lockup, The Meth Lab, and of course the counterfeit cash factory. Now, if you own all of these businesses, you can passively source them within your nightclub basement, so long as you buy all of the technicians that you're gonna need. So if I go to warehouse management here, you can see I have five technicians. All of them are working on a different thing. For example, this guy is working on sourcing cargo and shipments. This guy is working on cash creation. This guy is on South American imports, which is Coke. This guy is on sporting goods, which is weapons from the bunker. And this guy is working on meth which is from the meth lab. Now these technicians will cost you about a million dollars to buy all of them all together, but they will completely passively source you all of these goods. As you guys can see, my nightclub basement is worth $705,000 and I have literally not had to do anything in order to get this money. The only thing that I have to do to actually put this money in my bank account is complete the sale mission and the sale missions are really, really easy as a solo player. Now you will need to have some upgrades in order to make this thing run super smoothly. The equipment upgrade is super important and the staff upgrade is super important. The staff makes your daily popularity go down a little bit less quickly and your equipment upgrade here makes the warehouse technician guys source the goods twice as fast. So the nightclub is a super good business to own as a solo player. You can earn absolute tons of money using this business and it's super, super easy to do. So that's pretty much it for the nightclub guys. This is the best solo business in all of Grand Theft Auto Online. And as a solo player, this is gonna make you an absolute ton of money. So there you have it, guys. Those are 10 things that you're gonna to need to own as a solo player in Grand Theft Auto Online in 2022 in order to be successful and make a lot of money. If you guys enjoyed this video, if you learned something, a like is of course appreciated, if not dislike. Let me know in the comments down below if I missed anything. I know there's things like the master control terminal that are very important to own, as well as other various things, but I figured that these were 10 of the most important things that you're gonna need to own in Grand Theft Auto Online. Anyways, subscribe if you guys are new to the channel, and I will see you all in the next video. Until then, take care. Peace.